Rick Leinecker here. This is the second in the series of getting started with XNA. Okay, so we're going to change the background. And I'm going to go through several steps. At first it won't be good, then we'll, we'll make improvements to this as we go. First thing we need to do is put a second image into the content. We'll call it Hubble 2. And as you can see, the asset name is Hubble 2. Okay. Declare a second texture 2D object. Of course, we need a different name, so I'm going to say uh, background 2. Okay, now we need to load that guy in. So we are just going to do it like this. Background 2, and the asset name is 1. Excuse me, 2. Okay, so that loads it in. I'm going to compile it and run it just to make sure that it doesn't crash. Remember we said if, if anything goes wrong here, the program will crash when it first runs. Okay, down to draw. We're going to add a second draw command. And all we're going to do is change the object name, compile and run it. And all you see is that second picture. And the reason is, he who draws last draws best. What happens is this draws, and this draws right on top of it, so that's the one you see. Okay, so somehow we need to make sure that uh, we have a way to differentiate between which one is going to draw and which one is not going to draw. So, back up to the top, let's declare a variable called which background. Okay, and let's initialize it to zero. Um, and truthfully, C Sharp uh, sets everything to zero anyway, so you don't really have to do that. But I wanted to explicitly put that there just so um, it's obvious what's going on. Down to your draw method. If that equals zero, we'll draw this first one. Otherwise, we'll draw this second one. And notice how C Sharp, um, Visual Studio with C Sharp, automatically indents those inside of the, the if statements. Okay, and here again, since we start off with this equaling zero, that's what, what it's going to show when we run it. That's that first image, okay? Now we need a way to switch back and forth between zero and one. Okay, so now in our update method, this is the first time we've used it, we're going to say if, if it equals zero, we're going to set it to 1, otherwise we're going to set it back to 0. So it's going to go back and forth between 1 and 0, 1 and 0 every time update is called. And if we run it, this is actually going to look pretty bad. You'll see that these things flicker back and forth too fast to even really see. So we need a way to slow that down. So back up to the top, we're going to declare one more variable. Um, background counter, set it to zero. Remember, you don't really need to, but when I set it to zero, at least I explicitly know what, what's going on. Okay, here we go. We're going to say that plus plus, if it's greater than 30, then we're going to do this stuff. So it's only going to do this one out of 30 times we come through here. So hopefully you'll be able to see it more towards what, what you'd expect. Oops. I forgot one thing. We got to reset our variable here to zero. Okay. There we go. Now you might want to experiment with this just a bit and make that 60. And if you do make it 60, it's going to alternate slower and slower. Okay, good. All right, so this is a way to alternate your backgrounds. It's not really the best way. Um, there is a better way we're going to go into right now. So the first thing I'm going to put three, excuse me, two more images into content, Hubble 3 and Hubble 4. And I might recommend that you stop, pause the, pause the recording and go ahead and save this because we're going to drastically alter what you've just done and you may want to save a copy of, of this. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of background 2. 
except instead of background 2, I'm going to make this texture 2D an array. And we're going to hold four images. Okay. Now in the load, there are two ways we can do the load. And I'm going to do it both ways. Show you the difference. Sub 0, sub 1. And this will be sub 2. We got to change the asset name to 3. And sub 4. Don't forget these uh, subscripts, excuse me, are zero base. So it'll be 0, 1, 2, 3 for the subscripts, but the numbers will be 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so now we have all those loading up. And just to make sure, I'm going to compile and run it. Oops. Something is not right. Okay, it's down here is not right. Let me, uh, we're going to have to fix this. Otherwise, it won't compile. Okay. Down in the draw, we're going to get rid of everything and simplify it. So we're going to say um, M OBJ background sub M and which background. And then everybody will be happy. Okay. So now I'm going to run it and just make sure. Okay. But it's only alternating between those two backgrounds. So if I go up here, the one thing I have to change is in here. I'm going to change this code. And I'm going to say M and background counter plus plus if M and background counter is greater than 3, reset to 0. Okay, and that way it'll loop through all four of these things. And of course, you can have any image. I have these Hubble Im uh, telescope images. Oops, I did something wrong here. This should have been my bad. Which background? Let me make sure that compiles. Okay, sorry. There we go. Okay. And it goes back and recycles. Okay. So I had made a mistake here. Sorry about that. Now I'm going to show you a more optimal way to load in those images up here. We have four images, and that's okay. Four images isn't too bad, but if you had a lot of them, say 20 or 30, this would be really um, difficult. So we're going to put it into a for loop. And I'm going to take one of these and paste it in there and get rid of all the rest of these. The first thing I need to point out is that instead of sub 0, sub 1, sub 2, sub 3, sub 4, or whatever, it needs to be sub i. Okay, here's our counter i, right? And however i is counting is what we're going to use for the subscript here. Now somehow we have to build this string from that, that too. And there's a preferred way to do it. First let me get rid of that. I'm going to use the string.format, which creates a string based on stuff. It's similar to printf and sprintf. Okay, so we're going to say Hubble. Now, we don't have a percent %d, but the equivalent is uh, open curly, zero, close curly. And let's say i plus 1. i plus 1 because i starts at 0 and our pictures start at 1. Okay. Now you can have multiple placeholders in here, and the reason we use numbers is because the first placeholder will be zero, and then if you have another placeholder, it would be one and so forth. We only have one, so I'll get rid of that. But this should load them all in a much more eloquent way. Okay, so that's it for this lesson, and uh, work through it, uh, create your own, and get used to it. Thanks.